This is the making of. Feel the noise, y'all. Taste one. Apple. Yes, sir. your father he's in puerto rico and he wants you to come stay with him for a little while the reason i wanted to write feel the noise is that i grew up in puerto rico and left when i was young and as i got older i sort of felt this need to reconnect with my roots the script was brought to us by jennifer lopez's company and at the time we were just starting to have all these reggaeton artists so it was the perfect project for us to launch with because it was a combination of all these different elements of, of the whole company and then we attached the director Alejandro Chomsky. Sofia and I we made the film together she produced the film from the first day to the last day every single step of the film I was discussing it with Sofia so we were like a, a marriage. <laughs> Working with Alejandro was great. What was really great is that he, of course, speaks Spanish. And when you're shooting in a country where most people speak Spanish, it's great to have a director who can speak to his crew. i never been in Puerto Rico before. I had a great time. The crew treated me really well. They made me feel like part of the family. The atmosphere was so incredible. Such a creative team of people. It was amazing. On action. I mean, have you ever really needed to do something real bad, man? You just couldn't? Yeah, but not that bad. <laughs> well, I guess you had it a little bit better than I did. I think the film revolves a lot about the search of identity, who we are, and which are our roots. We sent it to Omarion, who's a very big artist for this label, and then Omarion was interested in it. Omarion is one of the most charismatic young kids I ever met, and we thought that there's nobody better than him to portray this young guy from Harlem who has to run up to Puerto Rico. You know, having to be, you know, a Sony Columbia artist and, you know, this being a Sony film, the script came across, you know, my agents and they told me it was something that I should check out. And um, I read the script, I loved it. So it was time to take, you know, um, a mature step and really uh, challenging myself. This was like his first film to carry, so he was focused. Marion responded right away, so you know, everyone was really happy. I can't even say that I auditioned for the role. I took the role. I took it. I think Marion has such a wonderful naturalness, and he's a nice human being. And that's where it all starts. I think he did a wonderful job. He was like doing a little dancing. I could see how everybody stopped what they were doing to pay attention to him. He was even superior than the professional dancers who were incredible but it was really, really interesting to see him dancing. Having to go to a place like Puerto Rico actually helped my character, and even personally for me, because it was something personally that I wasn't familiar with. And as Rob coming to Puerto Rico, he wasn't familiar with it. But, you know, at the same time, the ladies showed a lot of love, and um, it was great. <laughs> you ready? Oh, no, right here. You ready? Yep. Oh. I was a big fan of Victor Rasuk since I have seen a film he did called Racing Victor Vargas. So for me it was an honor to have this fantastic actor on the set playing such a crucial part. I met Alejandro and I was really stoked about it because I really love reggaeton music and it was like a real core story besides all the music stuff. I've never been to Puerto Rico until I shot this film, which was a whole nother great discovery for me. The producers took us to all these spots. I'm like working and getting paid to like go to the club. And I'm here with Amaya, like we're doing it up in Puerto Rico. Victor's a favorite of mine. I, I love Victor. I, I think he is uh, just a terrific actor and he was a great collaborator. You know, um, the, the scene where we're all eating dinner, I just, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Victor in that scene so much. You like the food run? It's a typical Puerto Rican dish. Ma, you think he's gonna say your food sucks? Victor bore a great levity to his acting, and in this piece it was nice to see him light and fun, and, and someone who also was, was um, teaching, teaching Rob about this new world. I, I just think he's terrific. Do you guys wanna come to a show tonight? 10 o'clock? My friends were farming. 
Sulai was a discovery. Sulai was someone that just uh, came to the film on the last minute. I just got this call one day and they're like, they need you to, you know, fly out to Puerto Rico tomorrow. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, so just fly out to Puerto Rico. I didn't even know. When I flew out to Puerto Rico, I still did not have the part. She got on a plane the same day. She arrived and she had no clothes, she had nothing. She had like her little bag that she bought. I went and I met with Sofia, Alejandro, and Omarion, and they made the decision right there. A one, two, three, and four. She had to go to the dance class. Then I took her to the hairdresser to dye her hair dark. You know, she had blonde hair. And the next day we started shooting. I think she looks very, very sexy in the film, and that's what we wanted. We wanted people to say this because she represents the dancing and the music and all that, so it was important that she had this charisma. And action. So anyway, as I was saying to CC, you guys put together a kick-ass demo, but I got a producer who's gonna take you to the next level, all right? I've never been to Puerto Rico, and no matter where you walk down the street, you can hear reggaeton. You actually can feel the sexiness of reggaeton. You can feel it go right through you. In Javi's and Rob's relationship, language doesn't become a barrier. The jealousy that could come about doesn't happen because of reggaeton. All of a sudden becomes a central part in their relationship. Do you get it? There's a song in the film called Koki, which is a little frog. The making of the song is really the central part of the movie. It's I like that sound, man. Reality is the best uh, stimulation for, 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 for new ideas. So when I discovered this frog, this Koki, yeah, yeah. then I said, why don't we incorporate this into the scene? So it was very interesting to, to do that. Field Notes for me is like the perfect title for this movie because it's true. I mean, music is something that you can't just listen to. It has to get inside you. You gotta feel it. We had the best reggaeton artists like Voltio, who is one of the most funny guys I ever met, Alexis and Fido, who were so popular in, in Puerto Rico. And we had Vico C, who is the creator of the reggaeton movement, who played one of the parts. He played the thug. I'm looking for my Vico C chair. I can't find it. It was amazing to work with the musicians because they're more extrovert, I think, than a lot of actors. Actors will retreat and sort of go back inside until they come back out to be a character, whereas musicians really, they perform, you know. Aside from acting and taking the acting very seriously, they also really entertain it. Good for you. I got a chair. <laughs> I think to capture reality is one of the most challenging um, elements of doing fiction. So I was very, very happy to be able to shoot the Puerto Rican Parade and to, to see it. I was actually never been in one of those, and it's gigantic. That's what brought them all together is Puerto Rico. So although they're back in New York, everything that's happened in Puerto Rico hasn't gone away. It's just become bigger. We did shot the Puerto Rican parade with two cameras. We rent a hotel room where we had a, a main camera doing the long shots. And we have another camera where we went inside of the parade with my director of photography, where we got like more close-ups and, and shots of the people at the parade. It looks great, you know, it's colorful, it's lots of people, it was, it's fun, it lo really looks like a grand finale. Everybody has a dream, man, and dreaming is free. What I hope people get out of this is that you have to feel pride in your heritage and, and where you're from, and that, you know, never give up on your dreams. Dream out loud. It's a nice phrase because it, it promotes action. Dreaming is free, so everybody can have a dream. It doesn't cost anything to have a dream. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter where you live, no matter what, if you have big dreams, you can make it happen. You know, follow your dreams and dream out loud and really make them manifest in your world because you're the only one that can make them happen. Really, if you're dreaming about it, then it's possible. It's some type of way that it can be done. It's good to dream it out loud. You don't have to hide it. It's worth to struggle because you can win.